Well, another crazy week of college football has come and passed. The AP poll is a little bit shaken up, not too much, but just a little bit. And this past week, we had two big SEC clashes, Georgia, Texas, Tennessee, Alabama. Georgia's defense was on point in this game. I mean, what can, you, what can I say? When Quinn Ewers and, and Arch Manning, but who also played in this game, you know, just get totally rattled by the Georgia defense. The run game, nothing. Pass game, terrible. Defense, it was okay. It was okay because, you know, Texas turned it over more than Georgia did. So, therefore, Georgia was able to get the plays needed to make the game look a lot better than it really is because I mean, it was a horrible game. Both sides, to be quite honest with you. But because Texas struggled so much offensively, they could not do anything with it. Georgia did with Trevor Etienne getting three TDs. This game, Carson Beck, horrible. Had three picks in this game. Again, Texas did nothing on offense, though. Again, totally rattled by the Georgia defense. When that Georgia defense is on point, it is on point. Now, let's get the elephant out the room. Do not throw things on the field. Do not throw things on the field. Do not throw things on the field. These drunk, you know, college students, you know, I was a college student less than five years ago. Don't be throwing things on the field, bro. Like, literally, that is so stupid. Why? I get it because the call was bad, but again, the call got reversed. You know, even though it was it, it technically wasn't even supposed to be reversed because you can't, can't review the call because it was not defense holding, but it didn't even matter because again, Georgia's defense had too much sauce. So Georgia looking in the driver's seat in the SEC as the SEC continues to pile up with two lost teams. Alabama has the second loss. Jalen Milrow did not look great in this game. Dylan Sampson. It's probably the only thing from this game that actually looked pretty good. Nico, uh, Nico, ugh, has, I don't think he's passed the 200 yards in an SEC game yet. Jalen Milrow continues to throw picks at the worst opportune times, and that offense continues to sputter at the worst possible time for Alabama. It's rough. Michigan got embarrassed by Illinois. When Luke Altmaier is running and throwing on you, you know you've done something wrong. Michigan is terrible. They're on their third, like I said, they're on to their third quarterback. They have another loss on them at this point. I don't even know what to say at this point. Uh, the Big 12, you know, Kansas State cruises. Iowa State had a wild game against UCF in which UCF ran the ball all over Iowa State. The Rocco Beck and company were able to pull out a victory at the very end. BYU had to survive Alan Bowman, you know, as the backup. And Ollie Wharton running all over, you know, that BYU defense with three hat trick TDs of his own. But again, the BYU defense is the ultimate, you know, contributor with making the plays needed at the very end. Miami had to escape yet again against Louisville. Yeah, I know. Well, well there was some ref ball in this game. Yeah, Miami escaped. Cam Ward is unreal. That offense of Miami's is unreal. Louisville, when that offense gets going, is also pretty good, as as we clearly saw. But again, no defense in this game. And Miami was able to make the plays needed at the end to win the game. Now, a lot of ranked teams kind of cruised this week again. Like I said, Kansas State already cruised to another victory, you know. SMU is undefeated in the ACC, which is going to be big, which is we're going to talk about that in a little bit. Indiana, despite losing Rourke, you know, with a hand injury, dominated Nebraska. LSU beat up Bacon Bits, Arkansas. Oregon shut out Purdue. Clemson beat Virginia by 17, put up 48 on them. I can't say the same for Missouri or Texas A&M. They looked rough in, in their games. And again, one of these two teams, you know, Missouri honestly might end up with a loss this week. So they're going to take on Alabama and basically what is an SEC eliminator for them. Texas A&M, Garrett Nussmeyer will take on um, Connor Weichman and the Texas A&M Aggies on Saturday night, you know. So Brady Cook got hurt. 
you know, from Missouri, left for like two and a half hours, came back, and won, you know, Missouri the game against Auburn. You know, tough, tough game. Um, A&M had to survive Mississippi State because, again, Connor Whiteman is really not that guy, but, again, A&M wants to believe that they are, you know, a really good team when they lost Notre Dame, who's quietly still who's quietly being Notre Dame, you know, just casually rattling off like 10 wins. They're probably going to casually get 10 wins, and that's what Notre Dame's probably going to do. But I don't know if it'll be this week against Blake Horbath and the Navy midshipmen. Oh, my goodness. Navy and Army have continued to cruise through the AAC and are looking to inevitably get to the college football playoff. And there is also Pittsburgh, unbeaten Pittsburgh, ranked pretty lowly at number 19. You know, they are taking on Syracuse, Kyle McCord, and that lethal Syracuse offense, Eli Holstein, and that lethal pit offense. I mean, both these offenses, we could be seeing a 400-yard pass day from each of these quarterbacks. Again, SMU Duke is on Saturday. Big key game. Malik Murphy, Texas QB transfer, hasn't looked the greatest. But Duke, with that defense, has the one loss on the season. SMU also has one loss on the season to BYU. I don't know how this game is going to go because, again, Duke's defense has been on a, on something. That offense has not been great, but that defense has really been good. And SMU, you know, has a quarterback that has emerged, you know, as a QB that has emerged and is making a name for himself. Let me tell you, he's making a name for himself. As my phone goes off for a second there, but it is what it is. And let me tell you, this I don't think anybody expected SMU to be, you know, this type of team. This, you know, this or at least, you know, at this point, with with what they have, you know, they dominated Stanford with you know Jennings, their quarterback, and they you know, Kevin Jennings is the SMU quarterback who's been running and passing all over the place. Uh, yeah, I just did not expect this. And you also beat Louisville, so you know that's also big. You know, again, the ACC race is not as clear cut and dry yet. Clemson is leading, you know, with a five and zero conference record, but they'll get some out of conference games real soon. Everybody else is really just starting to pick up. Well, maybe except Georgia Tech, but everybody else is really starting to pick up. You know, conference games like Miami, SMU, Pitt, Duke. Syracuse with just one loss, Virginia Tech, which has one loss in ACC, in ACC play. It, it is not going to be pretty, not going to be pretty at all. The Big 12, it is also going to be an interesting race. You know, Texas Tech is on the verge of probably being ranked soon. But again, BYU, Iowa State, and K-State are all, you know, looking pretty solid. Um, again, Big Ten this week, Oregon takes on Illinois. Luke Altmeyer and the vastly pretty good, uh, pretty good Illinois defense, you know, that hung with Penn State will take on Oregon. You know, Penn State trying to not, you know, lose before Ohio State. Miami also trying not to lose before they take on Duke, you know, next Saturday at some time. We don't know what time that will be yet. Uh yeah, the ACC games are pretty big this week, and an Oregon-Illinois game should be fun. It should be fun. Of course, the Longhorns, you know, the Longhorns dipped to, like, number five in the country, and they are just going to take on, you know, a Diego Papia-led, number 25-ranked Vanderbilt Commodores. I don't know how Vanderbilt is ranked because they just struggled with Ball State, lost to Georgia State. I don't understand, but all right. The power of Diego Pavia rules over all. And again, you know, Lake Horbath, Navy, taking on Notre Dame in a huge, huge game. You know what I'm saying? In a huge, huge game. Let me tell you. Um, yeah, it's going to be big inside. Wow. 
Wow. Wow, man. Wow. I, 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 I think, I think, I don't, I don't know, man. I don't know. Like, Navy, Navy is. Maybe, maybe it's just me, but I don't, I don't even know at this point. Like, this season's been kind of weird. It's been a weird season, let me tell you. It's been a weird, weird season. But it continues. It, it continues. It spreads. Another season of greatness continues of college football. So, probably wondering what in the world kind of, you know, what in the world kind of playoff prediction am I, you know, cooking up here? Well, I got you. So, this is my mid-season prediction for the college football player. Oregon will probably be the number one seed. Uh, Ohio State and Penn State will play at large games, in my opinion, along with Indiana. I think Indiana, this offense is one of the best in the country, like number two in the nation in yards. I do not think there will be many SEC teams here, and I think there will only be two. It will be Texas and Georgia. It will be Texas and Georgia. Texas is, again, you know, yeah, the competition has not been the greatest, but, again, Sark and company – they are still rolling. I just don't. I don't see, you know, a Vanderbilt win this Saturday. I just don't see that, and that's not just bias. It's just like Vanderbilt just struggled with Ball State. You know, Alabama wasn't really that good anyway, as we can tell. Georgia again. I, I just think. I think they'll beat Tennessee later. You know, right? I think Georgia plays Tennessee this year. Right, I don't remember. I don't remember. Clemson is basically a lock for the ACC championship at this point, barring a loss. At this point, barring you know a loss or two to like um, whoever else they play, because I forgot the other three ACC opponents they they do play. Miami, you know, also could be a lock for me. Um, yeah, Morgan's just too great. And you're probably wondering, hey, what in the world? What 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 about that Ashton Janty guy? What about him? They're playing Hodge Malik Williams and UNLV on Friday night. Boise State is. And I think, honestly, because the Mountain West is so bad, I think that's probably going to eliminate Boise State. If not, if UNLV doesn't do that first. Because, again, that go-go offense is unreal, bro. Unreal offense. So, yeah, Iowa State, K-State, the BYU will be the other three, you know, teams to go to the college football playoff, you know, as far as power five teams go. And then the Army Navy winner is going to boat race the AAC, and whoever wins the Army Navy, you know, double shot. You know, well, only the first one's going to matter. The second one is just for bragging rights. But I think Army and Navy are cruise control at this point to the AAC championship. And despite the fact that they may both lose to Notre Dame, they're both going to be eleven and one. You know, I think at the end of the day, that's what I think, you know. But, again, these midseason predictions could be wrong, and I still have Oregon winning the national championship, so don't, 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 don't shoot the messenger. I still think Dylan Gabriel and that Oregon offense will win the national championship, but it's going to be a dogfight to get there, you know, get to the predictable results in my opinion. But, you know, it is what it is with that, so. That's my mid-season predictions. I know these are probably going to backfire on me. They're probably going to backfire because we still have a few weeks to go. We have this last week in October, and we have all of November and the conference championships on December the 7th and December the 6th, the night before, to really kind of determine what in the world is going to happen this year in college football. Uh, thanks so much for all the views lately on the – Big Boy Eats posts. I've been, you know, I've been really thankful for that. For all of y'all to, you know, just, you know, new people that may be interested in subscribing, you know, this is a sports channel. <laughs> what I eat, you know, sometimes is in relation to the sports, to these sporting events. So, yeah, I'm going to post me eating, you know, something on the channel. So, if you haven't seen me, you know, post some of my cooking yet it's decent average 
okay at best to maybe good. It just kind of depends on what you people think, but I don't know what you people think. So that's why there's a comment section. That's why there's likes, dislikes, subscribe. There's all sorts of different things. Um, again, keep those post notifications on and stuff like that because there's a lot of posts. You know, they're going to be coming real, real soon. And we're still on the road to 300. We lost the sub the other day. I would like that sub to come on back. Because, again, we have a lot to go through, you know, as we get into the, probably the busiest month of the year for me, which will be November. I think November will be the busiest month this channel will have is everything kind of crashes in together. So just like college football for week number nine, it, everything will start to crash together. So, yeah, that'll do it for me. And I'm going to get on the bat here, and I'll see y'all tomorrow night to talk the NFL.